Welcome to the 14th video in the CCT data center series. In this video, we're going to talk about the Cisco UCS B series blade servers and chassis. Topics we're going to cover in this video include the Cisco UCS B series overview. We're going to look at the blades. Uh, we're going to look at the chassis itself, and then we're going to look at the install guides and briefly discuss why there's graphics, why there's GPUs in the servers. All right, so we're back on the Cisco UCS architecture page. I'm going to click on the UCS B series blade servers link right here. All right, then the first thing we're going to do is scroll down and we're going to do we're going to do compare models. Come on, Cisco. All right, so on this model comparison, this is where you're going to be able to see all the stats. Um, and first off, I just want to make the distinction. The B200 is what they call a half-width blade, and then the B480 is a full-width blade. And if you look at the resource assignments here, it's going to be exactly... Uh, a B480 is exactly twice the size of a B200 in terms of total capacity. There's very little difference uh, between the two. If you open up storage, you've got 20, you've got 39. So that's like a little bit of difference, uh, but still not much. Um, yeah, you can fit eight of the half-width blades to four of the full-width blades. No thanks, Cisco. Now you can have two graphics processing units versus four. Uh, so there's mezzanine I.O. adapter. So you could actually get one more mezzanine I.O. adapter if you went with the, uh, the half-width versus the full-width. But for, for the most part, it is, um, it's two to one. So then that begs the question, why would you, what dictates whether or not you would want to go with a half width or a full width? And the answer to that, of course, is it depends. It depends on the applications that you're going to be using on the Blade series. Uh, some applications have very high, um, uh, CPU requirements and uh, for that reason you might have to use the full width because it's going to have a lot more uh, vCPUs. It, it's all about how you how you want to divide up your resources. Perhaps you have you know a series of, of smaller applications that have uh, you know lower lower resource demand and you'd want to put them on a half width blade. It's all about knowing what you're going to put on it and how you want to divide up those resources uh, between the blades. Okay, so now we're going to back out of this uh, compare models sheet or page, and we're going to look at the view 3D models. So I don't know if you guys have ever seen this before. This is a pretty cool feature. If you go in the upper left-hand corner and you hit explore product animations, you can remove one of the half-width blades. It opens it up so you can see on the inside. And just a note, for the cert, uh, you do have to know all the elements on the insides of these servers. Uh, this this tool would be a lot cooler if it allowed you to zoom in, because you can zoom in like this, you can turn it. Oh, yes, so you have to zoom out to turn it. But yeah, so you can turn it. It would be a lot cooler if you could just zoom in and then it would show you in detail what everything is, like if you would get more of these little markers that would then tell you what it is. Yeah, so you click on it and then it tells you exactly what it is. So those are the M2 or SD cards. That's going to be a processor. And of course, this is the RAM. And uh, yeah, you, you, you need to know uh, what's going to be inside these, these servers. And it makes sense, right? If you're going to be a technician going out and working on this stuff, then uh, you need to know what it is. And we're going to show you, or I'm going to show you later, exactly where to find all that detailed information. Um, another thing, and this is going to go for all of these uh, UCS series servers that, that we look at here, is uh, you need to know um, what this stuff is, right? So this one, this, this button right here where my cursor is, is uh, that's going to tell you whether or not there's, there's power. Uh, this is going to tell you whether or not it's connected to the network. This is going to give you error codes. Uh, this is the KVM. Um, obviously, this is going to be like a, a reset thing that would allow you to factory default the blade if you have to do that. And I'm forgetting off the top of my head exactly what this is. Uh, but then you also have little error lights here. So th these are going to be for uh, two drives. So this is the half width blade. You can put up to two hard disks in there or two storage disks in there. And uh, they also have, you know, an error light and... Uh, this, the second one here underneath the error is just, it's going to be blinking when it's operating. So if it's reading or writing to that disk, then uh, it'll be blinking. 
But yeah, you can spin it all the way around. And uh, not bad, pretty cool tool. Oh yeah, so this is this is another thing that you'll you'll need to know. Um, here is a PCIe NVMe storage mezzanine. So this would be how the NVMe drives uh, would connect to the CPU. It also includes options for uh, graphics processing units. And this is where we would put the VIC cards or an MLOM card. And both of these could be VIC or MLOM, or they could both be mezzanines. All right, so real, real quick, let's look at the uh, one of the full width blades. All right, also you can see how these blade servers just slide in and out of the chassis. And then where they connect to the chassis is going to be in the back. They're going to interface right here with the chassis. That's how it hooks into the chassis. Now that's going to be a CPU. This obviously is going to be a hard drive, which can be controlled with RAID. KVM connector that we looked at before. So all these lights are going to be the same. Aha, and I just remembered what this one is. What this light is on the far right is going to be that, that's like the locator LED. So in UCS Manager, which is the piece of software that uh, you use to configure and control all of these blade servers, you can uh, basically tell the locator light to, to blink or uh, go on and then the technician would be able to find where, where it is. Otherwise it can be tricky to, to find exactly the, the physical uh, server that you're trying to work on. Okay. All right, so let's put this one away. We'll slide it back into the chassis. All right, let's look at the chassis for a minute here. These four things along the bottom are gonna be four power supplies. All right, so this is going to be the fan system here. Here's another thing to note. Uh, most of these servers, are, or all of the current gen servers, are now front to back airflow. So you've got the fans in the back pulling the air through, and you see all these holes that are in the front of the, the blades that are in the chassis, and right here you have these holes. That's to just allow the air in, and then the fans pull it front to back. And the reason this is important is because <clears throat> there's usually a standard in a data center um, in which you have to have everything that's in there pulling the air uh, in the same direction, right? So you've got all these different things um, in racks, and then there's rows of racks. You want everything in there pulling the air in the same direction, and that's what that's for. All right, so these are going to be onboard fexes. These are what allow the UCS series uh, or the B series servers to connect to the network. Now, most often these are going to connect uh, upstream to fabric interconnects, and you have two of those on board here. All right, so before we leave this uh, 3D model view, um, the only thing that the only distinction that I really want to make is that um, it's just important to remember that the blades. Uh, bring the compute resources and the storage and the chassis uh, has the power supplies the network connection and the fans all those components that are brought by the chassis are shared between the blade servers so be before going any further i wanted to give an overall view of the cisco ucs architecture uh, we just spent some time looking at the b series but i thought it'd be a good place to uh, bring in a picture of how the ucs architecture all works together um, so down here at the bottom, uh, these blue things basically represent the, the servers. Um, and then they have the, the network adapters, uh, like the MLOMs or the VICs, that connect them to the FEXs, um, which on the B-series were those on-module um, four-port uh, basically connections to the rest of the network. Um, and then those connect up to fabric interconnects, and the fabric interconnects are what have the embedded UCS manager on them um, and they are going to basically share a virtual IP address um, and so in order to manage the the whole UCS fabric you would log into that shared IP address and uh, that would allow you to configure um, everything else in the fabric and then the fabric interconnects are what's going to connect to the SAN uh, the LAN 
Um, they're going to have management ports, and then you can see another SAN connection over here. So the fabric interconnects are really like the gateway to the UCS fabric. All right, so now we're going to move out to the installation guide. So in order to get to this point, I googled Cisco UCS B-Series installation guide, and this one's for the chassis. Actually, I'll just show you exactly what I came through. All right, so I, I googled, or DuckDuckGoed, <laughs> Cisco UCS B-Series installation guide. Clicked right here. And then the overview page is gonna be where we're gonna spend most of our time here. So on these installation guides, um, I'm just gonna pick out the important things that you probably wanna focus on for the exam I mean, and for the real world. So here you're gonna have the guide to uh, some of the stuff that we were looking at on the when we were looking at the 3D model is they're gonna go through it and they're gonna tell you exactly what's on the, the front panel of these uh, blade servers. And this is stuff you're definitely gonna to wanna to know for both the real world and then obviously the test. It's definitely open season for that. All right, so that was the half width blade. Here's the full width B480. And it's also gonna show you uh, the things for the, the M4 servers. Although I do think that the test is primarily gonna focus on the M5s, which is good. Um, these guides do contain um, information about the, the, the previous generation M4s. All right, so you can see right here, it has some information on those fexes that go into the back of the chassis, the 5108 chassis. All right, so here we have uh, a picture of the chassis itself. Uh, so this is something you're gonna wanna study and understand. It's going to, again, show you, you know, more of the information about the details on the back of the chassis, the LEDs and, and all the details there as well. So when you're in the real world, it, it's gonna be easy to pull up one of these guides as long as you know where the information is uh, for the test. It is open season, what they might ask you for. Yes, yeah, so with all these different products, they all have, uh, there's a lot of crossover between LEDs and, and um, you know, how to read this stuff. You're going to see a lot of crossover and commonalities between the products. And right now I'm at the top of the installation page. Um, so when you go to install the chassis, uh, this would be the one that you would want to look at. Um, installing and removing components. Right here, if you're up here um, on the navigation pane, uh, this is going to tell you exactly how to do everything. This is going to be your guide on how to do this stuff. Right there, you've got installing and removing drives, how to take the power supplies out. Replacing the I.O. modules, which are going to be those fexes. All right, so that concludes this video. Uh, the things we went over in this video include an overview of the UCS B-Series, uh, the B-Series blades, uh, the B-Series chassis, the B-Series install guides, and why they're using graphics processors in servers. All right, so before we go over the topics covered in this video, I'm realizing that we forgot to talk about why they have graphics processing units in servers. Uh, so if you are familiar with building your own desktop or anything like that, perhaps for gaming, you'll know what a GPU is. It's what does the graphics processing. Uh, so why are we putting these in servers now? And the main answer to that question is VDI, uh, Virtual Desktop infrastructure, which just means that you're having people who are remotely located outside of the organization's network, or, or perhaps they can be on network, uh, but they will be remoting into RDPing to um, a, a virtual desktop. Now, so you have people who will RDP to desktops and you're having thousands of people do this at a time, uh, which puts a lot of graphics processing stress on the servers. And the GPUs are there specifically to, you know, show the, the desktop graphics to thousands of users at once. All right, so if you found that helpful, give the video a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.